Welcome to another short video from Classic Valve Co. Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate the use of our Hickok TV7DU tube tester. This uh, particular machine made in about 1962. It's a very reliable, um, rugged, uh, but portable tester and we use it to test a lot of the older valves that we have in stock. So when we turn the uh, Hickok on, um, as with most of the older tube testers, we need to ensure that um, it's calibrated for the mains voltage um, which is coming into the system. So uh, we press line adjust here and the meter should read exactly on line test, or 60 in this case, which is exactly half scale. If it doesn't, we've got the line adjustment here which um, can adjust um, the input voltage into the system. The reason that's important is that uh, I've um, just finished recalibrating this machine internally and there's a number of voltage points which need to be set um, to standard voltage um, if you're going to get sensible measurements uh, out of the system. I've also calibrated this against a modern uh, our, our digital Amplitrex system um, so that I know that the mutual conductance readings that I'm getting from the Amplitrex um, are the same as the mutual conductance readings which the uh, TV7 here is, is giving us. So today I'm going to test um, a vintage tube. It's a, it's a 6L6, the old metal tube from the mid-1930s. And uh, we use these quite a lot um, for reference checking purposes because they're a very stable tube and they maintain their characteristics over a long period of time. A very good tube indeed. Uh, from uh, from way back then. So we've checked the line voltage, we have that set at uh, line test or 60 on this meter here um, and the, the next thing that we do is we um, use all these selector switches here, there's around about 11 altogether, to set up uh, to match the characteristics of the, of the vacuum tube. So according to the manual we should have, the, well we've got the filament voltage on 6.3 volts of course, uh, filament connections on H, S, grid on 5, plate on 3, screen on 4, cathode 8, suppressor 1. And just double checking the manual, that is correct, HS53481. Bias we set to 23, which I've preset there, shunt is on 0. So when we insert a tube, the first thing we want to do is make sure that there's no internal shorting in the device, because if there's any internal shorting or high leakage, then of course the tube is going to be useless and we would bin it immediately. So we give the tube about 60 seconds to warm up and um, when that, that's done we can check for mutual conductance. But the first thing we will do is we will check for shorts and we just uh, move the function switch around here and give the tube a gentle tap as we move the switch and uh, if the uh, neon light here um, comes on um, steadily in any one of the switch positions then we know there's a short. Um, in the tube, and that tube would be discarded immediately. There's a little flash as we flip from one to the other and that's perfectly normal on this tube. So the next thing we're going to do is check mutual conductance and uh, I'm going to select range D on this um, range um, function switch here and as I said we've got bias, we're checking that on 23, that is correct. The tube now is warmed up and uh, all we do now is um, press the mutual conductance button 3 here and we're getting a reading of about 38 on the meter. Now 38 corresponds to about 5000 micromos which is um, exactly what this um, tube measured on the Amplitrex 81000 system. So that in a nutshell is a very simple test of one tube on the uh, Hickok. Uh, thanks for watching another video from ClassicValve.co.